put option, it's value of put option at time one, that value that is one minus plus one. What is my key point? Yes. My key point is using this approach, when you will compute pi A, yeah. is going to be 7 whole, 1 half, 7 point half, and pi B is going to be 5. Not getting into the calculations. For you see. Now, return back to the first example that we did. So let's see something, some very interesting relationship between this and the example that we did in the beginning. So, so in in that example 3.2, you can return back to it in the beginning of the chapter. We computed probability measure Q, which was lambda 3 over 3 over 2 minus 2 lambda. Lambda minus one. What do you say that first part of the last item? There you have this. And then we can compute the price of the same derivative, given by omega, and it turns out to be 10 lambda. Where the lambda is between, interestingly, something which is 5 and 7.5. Can you see a relationship between 7.5? So, what does this example show? So, pi was between. Pi could be anything. So just think about it. So if your lambda is between these two, then anything multiplied by 10 okay, is going to be the fair price. Okay. So that was our previous conclusion of the same value. And if I price it through basically you know, this approach, the approach that we have learned, then we are getting the same conclusion that any price between these two numbers is going to be a fair price. So what does this also show? It shows that if you want to price non-attainable derivatives, either you can do this approach or you can do this approach. Is it making sense? So it's not necessary that you should all always follow this, plot the points and you know, try to find some replicating and super replicating to for yourself. So on and so forth. You can use what we did in the example 3.0. Okay, and what is going to be the good thing about you know the interval where lambda belongs that it has a meaning now. That five and seven point five is what asking bit. These are asking bit prices, and you know this and lambda is going to be any value. So, if you want to price non attainable derivatives, so why I just showed this that if you want to price non attainable derivatives, you have two equivalent you know, methods to price them. So, either you can have this approach, which we discussed last time, or you can have this funny approach, which is <laughs> so funny. But Get 
Next. So what basically you are learning here is some big messier approach involves some complicated but relatively complicated computations. But these all things are kind of backgrounds for the for the for the model that we want to do. So the cost loss of best model essentially is stuff. I mean if you wish we can do directly that job. It's fine. But you know that would be like doing it without background. It's, that would be like okay, okay, it's like just having what you call um, an user approach. Okay, let's use it. Let's not get into it that what does it mean. Okay. But when you see that, okay, we are constructing a theory. Okay. Then, this, this is beautiful. Think about it. What, so, so let's summarize what we have done so far. So, in chapter 2, we did single period, single stock model with the two scenarios. Okay. But second fundamental theorem of Asset pricing, we know that it's a complete model. Okay. So we can price any kind of thing. So, so what we did in a single period, single stock, two scenario model, when it is going to be viable, we did this. And then if we have a derivative, nice. then how to find the how to find the unique fair. And then we said that okay, instead of now taking um, Two scenarios, let's take n scenarios. Right? And then we saw that you know no unique. Okay. We saw we saw that okay, what is going to be the meaning of viability of such model? Yes. Okay. That was first fundamental theorem of a surprise. And then we, we saw that if n is bigger than two, then you know such models are not going to be complete. In other words, there are going to be derivatives. Can price uniquely, and there are going to be derivatives. You can't price uniquely. Obviously, this question naturally arise, arises to questions basically that if we want to price, you know, which are those derivatives which I can price uniquely in a given model? Okay. Which are the you know, derivatives which I can't, you know, price uniquely in a given model? Actually, okay. and uh, if I have been given a model. It can be if it can if I can know that it can be priced uniquely. How to price it? Okay, and if a derivative is not attainable, how to price it? So we have kind of a complete picture. So we know that single period multiple scenario model works. Okay. Then I would like to do what you call the last thing. In this chapter, okay. and that thing is that what if we increase the number of stocks? So instead of you know one stock, I have now m stocks, and for each stock, I have n possibility. So I'll, I'll be quick with this. I'll just. And then we will ask the same question, what, is, what should be the meaning of viability of the model? Okay. And obviously we have this non-completeness issue here as well. So how to price a tenable derivative, how to price a non-attainable derivative. Two fundamental questions. Okay. Another interest of mine was especially about giving this course, was that you should see that you know, the, the little bit of reasoning that you have to use or learn you know, can be applied. Can be applied. Can be applied. You're not doing things for no reason. There's a lot more to come in the future which you can basically understand through what you're learning. And obviously, in the upcoming case, linear algebra is going to be important. We're going to see lots of 
um, notions of Yadir al Jabra being illusory. Okay. You might have thought that, okay, we're never going to see the application of these things. Are. There are applications happening. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, so in the situation next, the next situation is this. So let's update our model. Okay. So at time zero, instead of one S naught, I have S naught of one. Just like First the value stop. of First you know, stop. the stock price at Okay. 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 One of omega one. S M one of omega one. And da da da. S one of omega. S one one of S one M. Okay. S one one of omega M. And S one M. S one M. Okay. We can compactify it. I can say that put all of these things in a vector. So it's like, and call that vector as S naught. So S naught is a vector. S naught is a vector. Contains. All the vector we can And similarly, in this scenario case, if I'm writing, for example, S1 of omega 1, it's a vector. It doesn't mean one value, it's a vector. It's going to be S1 of omega 1 and S1 of okay. I of omega 1, I is from 1. That's for the thing that. Now, what is going to be the meaning of? Investment the strategy here is going to be x and what do you call y. Can you think of something about x and y? Why is also big? Y is going to be a vector. And we did one exercise in the beginning of this chapter might have seen. There is no reason that you should take x as a vector actually. So, you know, so it, you know, if you have multiple bonds, okay, there is no reason of investing in the multiple. So, so it's like, uh, you know, it's of no use if you if you take multiple bonds in your model. It's just enough to take one bond. Mm -hmm. So this means that x should be a number. But y should be a vector. Right? Y, i, and i should run from one to n. Okay. Okay. And what should be the value of this portfolio at far? Also vector. X be not vector. Plus y. It's a number. 
linear combination of What would be one of five? In case of, for example, omega, so x plus one plus one, and yi and test one of omega. Oh, okay. And then I can define algebra. Getting into it. You mean that you are clever enough to think about it? Joseph. Okay. In other words, when such a model is viable, what do you think? What should be the meaning of viability? First of all, the meaning of viability can be in, in, in N scenario case. So was an inequality. So there, we said that if S0 is between these two extreme values, we can say that your model is viable. But if S0 is between S1 and S1 of omega 1 and S1 of omega n, that was the viability condition. Okay. So give me a guess for the viability condition here. That this condition should be satisfied by for all of the M stock. Okay. So in other words, one of the quicker way to is that is S not I is sitting between S1 I of omega N and S1 I of omega 1. For all i equal to 1 to 10 or not. This is true that the model is viable. Okay. But I'm not going to depend on this condition of Basically, the, the condition of viability that we are going to use throughout the rest of the discussion is going to be through risk neutral probability. Okay. Okay. Now, what should be the meaning of risk neutral probability measure here? So recall what was R and P. So Q is Q1 to keep thing in Q depend on scenarios. It doesn't depend on number of stocks. 
is going to stay same. So in a one model, let me, let me not reveal this and think about it. So, so recall, imagine that I have just single stock, okay, and um, and scenarios model. What was the meaning of Q actually? Q is R and P, this mutual probability measure. Such that expectation. If and only if S not can be written as expectation, expectation of S1 bar. Q of S1 bar. That is, uh, S not should be same as I equal to 1 to 10. Qi and S1 of omega i. And sum of QIs must be. These are the two conditions. Now, can you already sense a problem here? Just think about it. We had, imagine. We had single stock n scenarios case. Okay. Then we can find the Q in this way. But now I have m stocks with n scenarios case. Okay. Here is an interesting question. I can find Q through S1, stock one. I can find Q through stock two. I can find because because for S S one what I need to do just so I need to just put one here and one here one and one here did you see that and I can find Q one question would that be same as if I find the group two actually did you see that. And would that be same as if I do it through an the answer is yes. In a, the model is in a model, in a model, it should stay the same. It should stay the same. Okay. It should stay the same. So roughly Q is to risk neutral probability measure in our updated model. If and only if, what should happen? Like these two conditions are satisfied for all the stocks. If and only if. Yes, sir. S naught is same as Q by S1 of omega i, where i runs from 1 to n. Okay. And sum of Qi must be 1. And I can put here any if j. j for all j. See here? This should be true for all j1 to n. J1 to n. You can't have different q's for f. It should be one. Right. So that's what we call the sufficient condition for the Let me put this condition in a more concrete form. Is it making sense? It's just rewriting things in a different way. More and more compact ways. In such a way that they are easily used. So when I'm writing S1, what I mean? I mean a vector. 
and S naught is also a vector. So let me define increment of stock. Okay. And the increment of stock is this. Okay. So let me define what do you mean by delta S one bar. So let me define the high delta S one bar. I mean S one bar minus S. -bar. It's not difficult thing. Yes. Okay. Now, S not the Now, S one bar is what? S not the bar. No, 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 no. S not the bar. It's a very, very, very. Zero. Minus one. Minus one. I want to rewrite this equation using the entries. Okay. Can I rewrite this equation using entries? Just think about it. Yes. So I can write this equation as what is this equation? It's not the so I'm saying that S naught J is same as EQ of S1 bar J. Okay. And uh, what is going to be delta S1 bar? Or I can rewrite this equation as so if I take this on the other side, I can I'll have a zero here. Can I say that I'm going to have EQ of S1, S1 bar J minus S0 minus S oh. minus S J. J. Agree? This should be okay. Because EQ of S1 bar J is this and EQ of S0 J since this is a known number so it should be S0 itself. And now think about it. That the next bar. EQ of delta S one bar. Zero. What would be that? Equal to zero. Zero. Should it be zero? Yes. Why this should be zero? Uh, equation. Okay. But this zero is not just a zero, but it's a zero vector. Okay. But that's a value vector. Okay. So this must be zero. I mean, if you haven't figured out yet, think about it. You can easily figure it out. Now, here is what I call the first fundamental theorem of asset pricing in such models. Take it. And we have already proved it actually. So, such a model is viable if and only if there exists Q. Such that EQ of delta S1 bar is zero. Okay. Sir, so what was the need of introducing this increment term? I'm going to show that. Tell you better. L S1 bar J. We have defined delta for vectors. Okay, I, can, I can also define delta for components. 
there is a difference between this one. So that's one of the components. So this is a component. So the model.